everybody. Welcome to another edition of the MakeCode Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard, at Richard on the MakeCode Forum. I'm Joey, at JWonderl on the MakeCode Forum. And I'm Vivian, at Live Triple on the MakeCode Forum. And, um, welcome. Uh, we're, uh, still working on our collaborative game today, but, um, before we get started, we do have a quick announcement. Um, this is something that we weren't really clear about before when we were asking for assets, and we just wanted to clear th some things up. Um, which is, we're, we're totally happy that all of you guys are submitting assets and giving us stuff to work with, but please make sure that if you submit an asset, it's something that you drew yourself and didn't based off anything else or based off any other's image or anything like that. Um, we've had to go ahead and get rid of some of the earlier streams we did this week because there were a few assets that um, uh, uh, were um, looked like they were copies of other ones, which, um, yeah, we should have been more clear about that. We're sorry, but um, please... Um, just in the future, if you go ahead and give us some assets, make sure that they're things that you drew all from yourself, all through the pixels in your brain. Yeah, I feel like maybe a similar analogy was like when you're writing a report for school and they're like, you know, you got to read something and then digest it in your heart and then, you know, write your new thing. So you, you can look at things and then you like digest it in your heart and then you can make your own art. So that yeah. that would be my guide. So if you find yourself using an image converter or having one tab open with pixel art and another tab open with the make code editor and you're like, you know, trying to redraw it, um, take a step back and, you know, make sure that you're drawing stuff that, that, that you yourself have. All right. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some of the new art we got because we did get some new art today. Um, first off, um, from Thomas S., we have um, a new battlefield. Looks very nice. Very, very um, on theme. Yeah. Um, they really took the desert to heart. Um, and we also got some mini versions of the enemies that they made. Um, so we have a, um, for the dust bunny, we have a mini dust bunny. For the mummy, we have a mini mummy. And for the giant scorpion, we have, you guessed it, mini giant scorpion. <laughs> which is my favorite name of all of them. Um, also, um, in addition to art, we got something from Unsigned Arduino who did the music for our game. Um, they uh, gave us a new battle song. So I haven't put it into the game yet, but I have imported it. Um, I've got inside of the music category now, there's this start and stop the battle music, just like I did for the desert song. And um, hopefully we'll um, put that in at some point. You won't be able to hear it, though. Sorry. I think it's good for encouragement me. for you to try out the game yourself so you can hear the beautiful music. Yes, it is good. We've been having a lot of fun listening to it. Um, all right, so there's also some other changes here. Um, wow, it really looks like the production value of our game went up over the um, past day. Um, I wonder who is responsible for this. Sh should I tell you? Should I tell you? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I did it. I explored the world of the American Southwest, and I tried to imagine what it might be like, and I populated the left side of our tile map, because it's the West, so that's the left side. <laughs> yeah, so Vivian went in and gave us a bunch more tiles. Um, she went in to find the tile map a lot more, so now it's a, it's a lot bigger. There is kind of like a big blank um, east, which hopefully we'll fill out later. Mm -hmm. I won't make Vivian do all the work. <laughs> um and we've got some, uh, yeah, it's all looking really good now. So thank you, Vivian. Woo. Um, all right. So where were we last week? Um, not last week, last day of yesterday. Um, we were working on um, trying to do a mini game, which I will trigger right now. So when we get into a battle, we have um, this kind of uh, battle system where you can either talk to them or, or fight them. When you talk to them, um, you can either choose the correct thing. So for this giant scorpion, I have to guess what they want me to do. Do they want me to match their tempo? Do they want me to spit a few bars? Cover my ears? Show off my tail? Um, yeah, let's show off my tail real quick. Penguin tails are cool, but scorpion tails are deadly. Mm. Um, yeah, and so when that happens, we get put onto this mini battlefield. We have a mini penguin, which I um, am completely in love with. Thank you, Joey, for drawing that mini penguin. It's so cute. Um... And the idea is that if you succeeded this game, you won't take any damage. Um, if you fail this game, you're going to take some damage to your HP bar, which we have up here at the top. Um, so right now, we just have it kind of going into this mini game, And once you get into this minigame, you're actually stuck. There's no way to get out of it. Um, but we're going to um, now take these enemies that we have on the right, which are all just these skulls um, that I drew right now. 
and we're going to make them do stuff. They're probably going to move towards you, and we're also going to have shields for you to hide behind that the enemies are also going to be trying to destroy. Um, so let's get started with that. Um, I'm going to close this. Am I forgetting anything, guys? Mm, no. You got it. Cool. All right. So one thing I'm going to do is... Um, probably should have done this before stream, but yesterday I wrote some uh, little sample code to make it so that we could test out our minigame right away if we wanted to. Um, and I'm going to do that right now. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and put in an if statement. And because I'm going to be just turning this code on and off, sometimes it's useful to just do this in your, your program, where you just put an if statement with a Boolean so that you can choose true or false. Um, and we're going to be testing out a um, uh, something uh, that will just start our mini game like from the beginning instead of having us to well, instead of making us walk around and find an enemy and get into a battle and choose the wrong thing. Um, this is just make the development easier. We'll turn it off once we actually you know do the game, but we might have to work on it again later. So it's good to you know put this in code. Um, so to do that, we're going to um, go into our functions and we're going to uh, call a um, function which is going to be um, a start mini game. And this isn't going to be enough, I think, to actually get our mini game going. So this is going to make it so that we um, can't move. And it seems like the battlefield didn't appear and um, all of the other things aren't quite working yet. So let's take a look at our code and see what we need to, um, what else we need to do to make sure that this stuff shows up. Um, so let's see. We are starting our mini game where you're moving. Oh, I think what's happening is that perhaps Persephone hasn't moved yet, or the camera hasn't moved yet. Oh. Um, so to do that, I'm just going to cheat a little bit. There we go. Um, so now after half a second, we start our mini game. And now you can see that I am in this weird state where I can both walk around and um, have the mini game going at the same time is kind of glitchy and fun, um, but we don't want that. So what we're going to do is, um, inside of our start battle function, um, I'm going to go ahead and copy over some code. Um, so the main thing I want to do is I want to set this in battle to be true. Um, and then we don't care about the tumbleweeds and question marks. We don't really care about moving either. Um, yeah, I think maybe we just need to set in, in battle to be true and make our Persephone health visible. We might also need to create an enemy, I guess. Hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to call... Um... Why not just do in ba like start battle? Is that because we have to go through the battle selection stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to go through the battle selection stuff. You know? That's fair. Maybe I'll do this a little bit more properly, and I'll go ahead and do it in an array. Um, not an array, a variable. Um, and I'll say um, debug minigame. Hmm. Um, and we're going to set debug minigame to be um, true. We're going to put this inside of debug minigame. And instead of doing this, we're going to, well, no, we'll still do this, change this to be like after 100, and then we'll just call start battle. And then inside of start battle, we'll make it so we go straight to the minigame. Do, 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 do. Oh, I wanted to put a pull up um, beforehand. Do you think I should do it now? Yeah. Okay. Put up a Sorry, we were a little late to start today. There was a there was a few things going on. Yeah. But um, we're here now, and that's what's important, right? Yeah. Yeah. Better late than never, or better late so than just on Friday. Before. Joey, are you there? Joey. Yes, there's something very loud going on outside my window, so I'm waiting for that to go away. Oh. Okay. All right. So we're going to do this if debug minigame. Um, otherwise, we're going to do um, do turn. Otherwise, we'll call um, that function we want to do, which is uh, start minigame. And now, cool. All right, so we got the minigame going. We still have this. Um, okay. I'm going to also put this Q story part inside of here. Um, 
and they're dead. All right, we're straight into the game. Awesome. Um, so now let's go over to our mini game um, and uh, start doing kind of the logic. Um, so we have a few things we need to do. We need to make sure we have some um, barriers, and then we need to give the enemies some behavior. Um, I'm thinking maybe we do enemy behavior first because that's going to be kind of the tougher thing. Um, and then we'll do the um, barriers. How does that sound to you guys? Yeah, sounds good. All right. There's nothing to so, bury um, if there's no enemies. <laughs> Sorry. There's nothing to variate. Ba bury, 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 <laughs> like barrier against. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Sorry, I don't use that word that often. I, I don't know. If, I, I'm maybe I made it up. No, I think it's real. Oh, nice. Not, not actually. Oh. I think you did. <laughs> yep. Um. All right, so what, what should we do for, for um, controlling the movements of these guys? Um, what do you think, Joey? Movement animation? Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So we're going to make some movement animations that make it so that um, our character um, goes over here and then kind of files some patterns to get to the, the player. This is awesome because that means we're also going to be able to do this for each of our characters. We can store these on our um, enemy objects and make sure that they all have different paths and different ways of getting to the player. So um, uh, do you guys want to start making some? Yeah. Movement animations? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they should just be like, I think you should probably make a little demo program where you have a 150 by 50 battlefield and like, you know, start on the right of it and go to the left. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. I will do this. This will be my first movement animation. That's not just a line, I think. Nice. You can make it just a series of lines if you want. Oh, okay. I will do my best. All right. So while they're doing that, let's go ahead and I'll make one and hopefully um, we can see how they work a little bit. So I'm going to do an animate, um, and I'm just going to make this one really simple. I'm not going to do any curve stuff. I normally like to throw in a bunch of curve stuff, but I know that's basically, it, it's very difficult to parse. <laughs> so instead, um, I'm going to just do some some straight lines that are kind of interesting, and we'll have them appear in the um, uh, uh, correct place. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that. No, I didn't. Look at him go. <laughs> um, so right now we have them doing the fly to center animation and that's why you see them kind of zipping off um, the screen um, instead though we're going to go ahead and go into um, text and drag out a text block and we're going to make some stuff happen um, so I'm just going to be using two of um, our commands um, the first one is going to be H which takes in a number and the next one is going to be V which takes in a number and basically what they say is go H this many pixels. So if I were to do, um, yeah, sorry, go H, go horizontal or go vertical. Um, so if I say H 20, that's gonna mean add 20 to my X. So it's gonna go right 20. If I do V 20, that's gonna mean add 20 to my Y. So it's gonna be going down 20. So it's the same kind of coordinate system that we have for um, these things, but it's a nice way for you to kind of script out what you want these enemies to do. Um, so let's go ahead and um, add this in. Right now, you also see that I'm getting an error in my program. That's because I don't have a valid animation in here. But as soon as I start writing a valid one, it's going to work. Um, OK, so uh, I think we're going to have it move like, let's do like just something that's kind of basic. We'll do like v10, h negative 10, v20, um, um, h. Well, let's do v like negative 20. I'm trying to do just like a zigzag. Um, positive 20, H, negative 10. Um, and let's just see how this works right now. Um, so I'm going to have a loop turned off and this going. And there we go. We've got our enemies doing a nice little space invaders type thing. Um, and actually, I could make this my entire thing if I just were to increase these H's a little bit so that they're moving faster towards the player. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, so let's keep you going with this. So we're just going to um, keep reversing direction until they've made it all the way to the player. So V negative 20, H 
negative 30 v 20 h negative 30 and i think that should do it let's see it go nice all right we've made it to the play so um you might be wondering um something which i've forgotten oh yeah how does this time um, argument work well this time is actually the time for the entire animation that's why as i add more steps you'll see them moving faster um, for each of these steps, so each V and each H, each one is going to get the same amount of time. So if I were to count these up real quick, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've got 10 um, steps in my program. Because I'm running for two seconds, that means every single one of these steps is going to get um, two seconds divided by 10, so 200 milliseconds. So let's say that I want to make it, um, I want to give the player a bit more time. So maybe I want to give each one like one second. I'll go to 10,000, and now we should see it be moving quite a bit slower. My animation fact looks awesome. <laughs> Great. OK. Um, so this is pretty cool. But we also want to check to see um, when the um, player is supposed to take damage. So we want the player to take damage whenever they get past where the player is. Um, we don't want them to necessarily have to collide with the player, I think. I think as long as they're in this x value, basically, we want the collision to happen. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to do um, one of our old favorite tricks. I'm going to make a collider sprite that's going to be over where the player is. And when they overlap with that, then we will end the mini game and go back to the regular game. Um, and also, I, I think that this is a pretty good amount of time because we want this game to be pretty quick. Um, because you know you might have to encounter it several times during the the battle. Um, so we might end up tuning it a bit once we've played the game. But for now, I I, I like this timing. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and do that um, mini game ending. Um, I think that we're going to go to our um, where we're creating mini Persephone up here. Um, and now we're going to create another sprite um, that's going to be our mini Persephone collider. How do you guys usually make these SVG paths? Do you just like be like a string wizard and you know manipulate it until it works or like yeah i'm a string wizard cool i'd like to be a wizard or something that's something i like to brag about because you know <laughs> you should you should brag about it, you know if you're not gonna toot your own horn who is gonna that's a good point mm -hmm. but you know like magic's all about secrecy you know so hmm. i think magic is all about being cool hmm you then saying again, that I'm not a wizard. True. Yeah, it's only Shannon was here today. Yeah. By the way, um, I know someone on the forum, I think it was Dobix, requested us to do um, RPG versions of ourselves. I'm so for a excited. Game. I'm so excited. We're totally going to do that. It just happened to be that we're doing this this week. So um, that'll probably happen next week. Um, Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set the position just like we're setting the position for the main battlefield because um, we're setting the bottom left, and that's actually perfect because we need to set the exact same values on our mini Persephone collider. And I also give it a z-depth that is um, above the battlefield, so hopefully we should be able to see it now. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So as soon as the enemy touches this pink bar, we want to um, say the minigame is over and go back to the battle. So, um, to do that, oh, first, um, let me give this a kind. I'm going to give this a kind, which is going to be like um, mini damage collider. I'm trying to keep this mini naming convention going. Yeah, I would like to be able to just like, if there's ever a group of three words, I would like us to break it up so that we can all say a word each. You know, it's like parallel programming. We're being most efficient with our speaking. Yeah. 
it worked super well yesterday, guys. You should have seen it. <laughs> yep. Um, okay, the other thing we want to do is I think we want to set a flag on here just to be safe. We're going to set the mini Persephone collider not to be a ghost, but to be um, ghost through walls. This is a new thing that Joey added, um, which makes it so that you can now control what you are ghosting through when you, when you set ghost on your sprite. So you can say, like, I don't want to do overlaps, I don't want to do tile overlaps, or I don't want to hit walls. In this case, we just don't want to hit walls. So, All right. Um, so now that we have this collider going here, we're actually also going to... No, I'll leave it up for now, but we'll turn it invisible in a sec. So I'm just going to put that block there. Um, so let me go ahead and go to invisible, and I'll set it to off for now so that we can see it. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and drag out now a um, overlaps event. Um, so for this first overlap, we want um, this to be the uh, mini enemy, which is um, what these guys are. Um, and for the second one, we want it to be our um, mini damage collider. And now, when this happens, we're going to um, make it so that uh, our mini game ends. So it's time to make another function. Quarter time? Quarter time? You know how, like, you know, in sports there's halftime? We have quarter time, but it means, you know, when you don't call a function, you over it, quarter. Yeah, it just means entirely different. But there's like, just as much similar. celebration. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay, so I'm making this function end mini game. It's going to take in a Boolean called did take damage. Um, and we're going to call this function right away. Richard, why do you have to rain on my quarter time parade? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, and we, we're going to set this to be um, true because we did take damage. They did make it to the end. Um, so when that happens, um, the first thing we want to do is for whenever we end this mini game, we're going to have to clean up all of these sprites we created. Um, so... Just to make this a little bit quicker, um, I'm going to add an extension now, one that we haven't actually been using up to this point, and I only really need one block from, but... Mm -hmm. Sound apps! Ooh. And that has a very nifty block, um, which is destroy all sprites of kind. Why is that in the tile maps? It's pretty useful when you're loading tile maps and unloading them. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and destroy all of these. All of our mini types. <laughs> yeah, I think that's all of them. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and then we also need to destroy all sprites of kind projectile. Maybe I should change this to be mini projectile. <laughs> Let me do that real quick. Can you change the kind name? Yeah, you just have to set the kind after you create the sprite. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, right, I put this into a function. I appreciate go. your commitment to consistency. Well, it makes it easier for when I'm doing things that have to affect all the sprites, like I just was. I could just choose all the things that started with mini. Mm. All right, we're going to set our projectile kind. Um, to be a new kind called mini projectile. And now I'm going to go back to here. And we're going to um, destroy our mini projectile. Okay, so let's watch this go. Let me um, fire a bunch of things so we can see them disappear too. There's only failure here. Maybe. Cool. I can still fire because we're still kind of in the mini game, but you saw everything disappear. So that could work. Um, all right. So the other thing we want to do is we probably want to print something out, which is. Um, um, like that you took damage. So I'm going to go ahead and do a Q story part real quick. Um, this Q story part is going to say uh, just like 
not sprite say I went to print dialog. <laughs> All right, so we want to get the name out of our enemy that we're currently facing. So we're going to go into our um, sprite data and get this data as string right here and change this to be our current enemy. And we're going to set the data to be name so we can get their name. Um, and then we're going to just make this did space. Then here we're going to put the amount of damage we took, which right now I'm just going to hard code and say, Two. Yep, because we have 20. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Um, so we're going to print that out, and we're going to use our status bar to um, change the value. So let's go ahead and change our value right here. Change this to be um, Persephone's health, which I think it called like Persephone's health. Nice. Yeah, here we go. You know yourself um, so by... well. Yeah. Well, I only did it yesterday. <laughs> no, I did it two days ago. Yeah. Very impressive. Um, and then we want to go back to um, the next turn. So we're going to do a um, Q story part, and we're going to call our um, function. Is do turn. Awesome. All right. Cool. We now have a mini game. We can never win. Um, and then also, real quick, I should probably match my formatting. Yes, Vivian. Uh, do we need to use the did take damage um, variable when it's like if we take damage or not, or are we not hooking? Oh up? yeah. Man, don't you think that would be a star if we were still doing stars? Have a star, Vivian. A star in my heart. I was on the soccer team right. in high school. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, and then as punishment, if you missed a practice goal, you had to jump and you had to go, I'm a star, which I didn't think was a punishment. It seemed nice. It does seem nice. All right, cool. Um, so now that we've got all, we've made sure all of this is working, I'm going to go ahead and take this invisible and turn it on so that we can't see our collider anymore. Um, and now let's handle the other type of collision that we have, which is we want to be able to um, make sure that we destroy these um, uh, enemies when we, um, you know, attack them. Um, and so I think that we're going to use the sprite data again and give these guys some health. And this health is just going to be the number of times they need to get hit. And so to test to make sure this is um, working, I'm going to go ahead and set this to two for now. What did I call it? New enemy. There we go. New mini enemy? New mini enemy, New yes. New mini enemy. <laughs> um, cool, all right, and we're gonna need another spite overlap, which is gonna be when our mini projectile hits a mini enemy. I love saying mini enemy. Mm. As soon as I stop saying it correctly, I'm sure I will like it less. Um, th th then don't. Yeah, you're right. Um, okay, so when our sprite of kind mini projectile overlaps other sprite of kind mini enemy, we're going to go ahead and destroy our projectile first. Um, we don't want this to run multiple times. So we'll go ahead and destroy that sprite. And then we're going to um, decrement our health. And if the health equals zero, then we're going to destroy our mini enemy. So let's go ahead and go back into sprites and get the change number by. I'm going to do this to other sprite. I'm going to do health. I'm going to change the number by negative one. Ah. Whoops. There we go. Um, and we're going to use a logic and a comparison block. 
and we're going to do, I think, less than or equal to, just in case we accidentally put in zero for the health or something. Um, and we'll need to get that number out. So let's go ahead and go to our um, sprite category, get out this get data, um, change this to be other sprites, and change this to be health. And then if that is true, then we want to destroy it. Yeah, yeah, it's the desert. All right. <laughs> they don't stand a chance. <laughs> All right. Got them. Okay, so we, we handled that, but now we're dealing with this problem where, um, well, I mean, they're all gone, so I'm just stuck in this minigame forever. Um, so what we also need to do inside of here is check to see if there are no mini enemies left. If there are no mini enemies left, then we're going to call our function again, our end mini game, this time with did take damage to false. And the game's going to keep going. So to do that, we're just going to put another if statement here. We're going to go into sprites and get our um, array of sprites of kind, this one right here. Go into arrays and get a length block. We'll do another comparison and see if it equals zero. And if it does, not, or sorry, we want to first change this to be mini enemy. See, I got pretty close with saying that yeah. one wrong. No. Oh. He's not enunciated clearly. I thought you were pretty close to something else. What? Oh, using a quarter? Yeah. Sorry. Unfortunate. All right. So let's win this minigame. Yeah. Yeah, let's win. Yeah. Well, that didn't work. Um... When you destroy it with the fire, does it destroy it right away? Joey. Joey, power through the noise. Um, it should destroy it right away, yes. Hmm. Uh, it destroys it internally, and then it like only stays on screen as a destroyed sprite for half a second. Oh, maybe it's still, it might still be in that array, though. Mm. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we should file this bug, but okay. um, I think this um, this fixes it. So maybe less than equal something... to just so you can fix that later. Yeah, all right. It was a good call, Joey. Okay. Um, all right, so we've got our minigame going now. Um, that's pretty cool. Do you guys have movement animations for me? Yes, we do. They're in the chat. All right. So, um, oh, wait. I also need to make sure that I set that, um, whoa, um, that variable to be false again. So mm -hmm. let's go to um, here, grab out a set, change this to, oh, whoops, not in here. In here. And I want to change to the in a mini game. Be false. I like that they move together, you know? Teamwork. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to make a fight do something. Um, all right. Uh, right, I was gonna give you guys these animations. Let's go do that. All right, first one's from Vivian. My first, my first, my first movement animation. That that is yes, cool. Yes, everyone be nice. Mm -hmm. Please. Um, so I'm gonna just drag this out and put it in here, and drag out this one, um, and we'll go ahead and put this one in now. And Vivian said five seconds, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in for five seconds. Ooh, a lot like. <laughs> 
like mine, but it's more curvy. I like it. Yeah, like your projectiles. Ah. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> um, all right, awesome. Let's go ahead and do Joey's now. Whoa, Joey's got a lot going on. And Joey had it for seven and a half seconds. Ooh, tricky. <laughs> Watch the whole thing. It's like they're trying to fake you out. Awesome. Okay. So um, for now, I think we're just going to put these all into an array and we'll choose one randomly. But um, in the future, I think we're going to make one of these for every single type of our enemy. Um, and then we'll also give them all health and give them all like um, a little image. Um, and we'll use that so that each of the fights feels different, you know? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Okay. So for now, let's just go into on start. And you know what? I'm going to leave it hard coded for now and then I will go ahead and. Um, do this later um, because I'm also going to put in the times and I think everyone knows what that code's going to look like and it's just going to take a while. Um, all right. So in the meantime, um, let's go ahead and you know what? We should actually do this for our enemies on stream right now. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so let's start with um, Vivian's Vivian, which, which enemy do you think is most encapsulated by your path? Mm -hmm. Wait, shouldn't we do the ones that we made or any of the enemies? Oh, you can do the ones you made. Sure. Oh, um, I want to put it on Shannon's because I feel like, you know, a curvy path is maybe something that uh, a horned lizard might do, especially if it were sleepy. It'd be like, I should be walking straight, but I won't keep on falling asleep. So it does a curvy path. I like it. All right, so I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to make a um, new property, and this property is going to be um, mini enemy path. I'm going to set this to be this big thing. And we're also going to need to store a number, so let's go ahead and copy this one. And we're going to set um, the mini enemy path time to be 5,000. Um, and we're also going to store, I think, the the mini enemy health. Oh. It cannot be five thousand. That seems real real tough. Yeah. Um, we'll put this one at two, um, and then we'll also want to store the um, uh, number of mini enemies. And set this to be like four. Um, all right, cool. Joey. Uh, I, I was thinking for my fox. Uh, nice. Because they are a little bit shy, but they're still going to meander towards them. So they meander just at an angle. I like it. I have seen fox me foxes meandering before. <laughs> That's one of the mil many qualities that foxes and rivers share. Name some more, Vivian. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Yep. They, they both uh, have they spirits, both... right? Sorry, what, Joey? They, have, they both have spirits. I've seen the um, spirited away. Yep. They both have spirits. Um, they both have currents. So rivers have currents in them. And then foxes um, probably conduct electricity. So then they would have currents. Blood's kind of like a current, right? It kind of goes through and around and goes back in. Yep. And if you try put a magnetic field around it um it would be it would be magnetic hmm they both exist that's the thing that they share and they're both fast nice so like many it. qualities that they share <laughs> um okay so we're gonna do some things now um and what we're going to do is um i went ahead and stored those on those two enemies but I'm not going to do the rest right now. In fact, I'm just going to use mine as the default path. So if there isn't a path on an enemy, it's just going to use this boring old one that I made. Um, 
So right now, where we're using this path, we're going to go ahead and go into block object. We're going to get the object that is stored on our current enemy. And then we're going to go into string, and we're going to get a property off of it. So let's go ahead and get string. And we'll go into our dropdown and choose the mini enemy path. Um, and put that right here. Well, what if there is no mini enemy path? Use the Richard one. Like that. Oh, we just no. get an exception. Um, so um, the way that we're going to handle this, I think, is we're going to uh, assign this to a variable. We're going to set path to be this. Mm -hmm. And um, if... Sorry, we're going to set path to be the entire thing. Um, if we don't have a path, so if not path, then we're going to set our path to be my default one. Ooh, idea for your util extension. Mm -hmm. With default. Yeah. Uh... What? Make a return to any. Oh, okay, return to any works. Yes, good. I feel like that was the least number of words you could have used to do, to um convey this complex idea. Very efficient. I commend. I mean, you could just say or operator in it. I'd get it too. I knew I had the context. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're gonna do this exact same thing again, but with a new variable. So we're going to set time um, to be uh, getting a number off of this object. So let's go ahead and get a number. There we go. I'm going to make a function for this. So we're going to um, do a quick function, which is going to be um, with default number. It's going to take in two things. Number is um, might exist. Um, and the next one is default if not exist. Mm, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, and so this function is just going to do um, um, encapsulate this thing so I don't have to create a bunch of variables. We're just going to do if, and there might exist. Oh no! All right, I'll just make a variable for it. Called temp. Uh, so, since we have some time, it's probably a good thing to mention that the reason this works is that in blocks like JavaScript, we have truthy and falsiness of things. So if it doesn't exist, or if it's zero uh, for a number, it'll come out and get replaced here. And for strings, if it's an empty string, or if it doesn't isn't ever assigned, they'll get replaced. Exactly. Thank you, Joey. And we're going to return default if not exist. There we go. Cool. So now I just had to create one variable instead of a bunch. Um, so let's go ahead and go where we're using these numbers now, right over here. And I'm okay with doing it for the string, um, so I'm going to leave that as is. But I'm going to um, go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff that I was just doing. And we're going to call my function. So let's call with default number. Um, the first one is going to be, first argument is going to be the thing that we think might not exist. So we're going to do a get object stored on current enemy. Do, 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 Okay, current enemy, um, and we're going to get number, and the number is going to be the mini enemy path time. Oh no! All right, fix it. <laughs> nice. Okay, so we also need to do the same thing with the health. So let's do that real quick. Set this to be the mini enemy health, and we'll set the default to be one. 
And then um, inside of this repeat, we're going to do the mini enemy count and make the default four. Wow, that was way more useful than I realized. Yeah, that's why I did it for numbers and not the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then there's one other thing we want to do, which is um, I stored the mini enemy enemy, the mini enemy image. Um, on the um, uh, sprites that we got artwork for. So I'm going to do that real quick for right here. Um, I'm just going to have to make a variable for that one. So let's go ahead and make a new variable. Oops. Mini enemy image. <laughs> We're going to set this to be... Um, with the object that is stored on current enemy, we're going to get a um, property of type image right here. And, um, oh, whoops, I'm gonna put that right there. And then we're gonna change this to be mini image. Now we're going to do an if statement and a not. We got a question in the chat from unsigned Arduino. If TypeScript has exception handling, uh, TypeScript itself has very good exception handling. Our TypeScript does have some exception handling. That was a relatively recent addition. So you can do try yeah. catch. I think we handle everything pretty much. I think so. I mean, uh, it, it probably is pretty good. Uh, it's a recent-ish addition, like within the last year. So I haven't done too much testing with it. So that's why I'm, yeah. uh, what I meant by that. All right, so let's test this out. Um, okay, wow. whoa, hey, look. We got dust bunnies. Um, so let's go ahead and get one of your guys's. Oh, yeah, so Finnick yeah. knocks, and look, it's following Joey's path. Nice. Nice. So it looks like our code is working. Um, so we'll probably do it off stream. We're going to go ahead and make mini versions of all of our enemies. Um, and, of course, we'll, we'll um, open this up to the floor, too, to kind of, you know, get you guys to submit some. Um, mm -hmm. Just a quick reminder. Um, if you are submitting art to this game, please make sure that it's art that you drew just from your your, your brain and nothing else. From um, the ether. Yeah. Um, so that we'll be able to make sure that we're only using art that you know we have permission to use because you know mm -hmm. artists work hard on the stuff that they make and we don't want to use anything without permission. Mm -hmm. um, and um, thanks for tuning in. Um, so we've got our, our battle thing mostly working now. I think all we really have to do, left to do is we're going to do fight tomorrow. Um, and we'll probably yeah, also we do start run. doing the, well, I won't be here tomorrow, but, um, it'll be up to you guys. So, what is our journey? What is our task? Okay. Give us homework. Yeah. Um, well, I think the main thing is we want to, we want to have like a story now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe doing, maybe doing an opening cutscene. I know Vivian does amazing opening cutscenes. I love doing cutscenes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it needs to be at least a 100-hour epic, or else it won't match Persona and win Richard over. Yep, that's true. That's all I'll accept. Um, and then we probably also, if you guys happen to finish that, we can also work on making the villagers say stuff when you get near them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm personally a fan of when the um, they just automatically start talking when you're near them, and the word bubble just appears you know, above them instead of having to go up and press A. Mm -hmm. Wait, Richard, what, what assets did you say you wanted? Or did you not? Oh, oh, uh, yeah. I think um, we want versions of the mini enemies, and I think we still want more enemies. If you guys, you know, can submit them. Can Can I make a request, maybe? Yeah, go um, for it. If so, I, our our goal is we want to have you find water, but we don't really have a place yet where you can find water. So if you guys want to make us like some tiles for like the oasis, or maybe like mm -hmm. water, or something, that'd be awesome. Because man, maybe making tiles is really oasis hard work. Condition. So that'd be awesome to see what you guys can come up with. Yeah. So, Joey, what'd you say? Oh, a fake oasis so we can have a mirage too to trick people. Yeah, we want cool places to go because right now it's all very um desert. Yeah. Oh, and right now, actually, I'm going to do one more thing real quick before we sign off because um, I just realized it's going to take me like five seconds to do fight. Oh, really? Um, just do damage and then call next. Yeah. Cool. Um, oh, did... I guess we're not storing health on the 
enemies yet, so never mind, I'll do this later. Mm -hmm. um, but I might do that off stream just because it's very little code and it's just mostly entering different health values for all the enemies. Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning in. I'm Richard, at Richard on the MakeCode Forum. I'm Joey, at JWondrel on the MakeCode Forum. And I'm Vivian, at LiveCheerful on the MakeCode Forum. See you tomorrow. Well, I won't, but other people will. We'll see you tomorrow. Don't worry.